Hi everybody, Jordan Plays here. Tr time to talk about the most magical place on earth. It's French counterpart. Let's go. Alright, just before we get started everybody, I want to make two ground rules. One, this video is split up into three parts because I'm probably, as you're seeing, the length of the video. And two, this this video is not made for kids because I, I might, you know, <laughs> use some more adult language in this. But that's just me. Um, I, I might, you know, get a little too excited uh, just, to, just to be aware. Anyway, let's go into uh, part one. The setup. <laughs> right now, now is the bit where we get serious. Uh, I'm gonna start. I'm starting off with a setup just so you know, pretty much my experience throughout the entire thing, so that the whole story makes somewhat of a sense. Anyway, um, it all started back on on, on Christmas last year. My mum and dad they started getting me loads of different Disney stuff. For, for Christmas because I like Disney. I mean, I'm a very big Disney fan myself. I don't know if you can see near enough. My bed is Mickey Mouse. I've got Mickey Mouse up there. And, you know, and I've got loads of different, you know, Disney things, including this t-shirt, if you have been noticing. But, uh, but I, I thought to begin with, it was very, very weird. You know, because I thought, you know, I haven't asked for any of this stuff. Why are they giving me all this stuff? And I, I started really starting to question some things. And uh, and that... But they didn't give me too much stuff to make me go... Hold on a second. This is becoming a bit apparent now until my birthday, which I'll, I'll get into. Anyway. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show most of the... I'll show basically all the stuff I got from the trip and pretty much like all the setup stuff at the end of the video when I get to all the bonus stuff because you know why not I uh, might as well get out the talking you know segment first which is gonna take a long time <laughs> anyway um, going on to my birthday my 21st birthday I uh, I'm, I'm not gonna share any photos of my of any of the setup bit I'll, I'll, I'm only gonna share photos of when I'm actually at the place because it'll be easier for me to edit, and I think those are the only photos I have, I think. Anyway. Um, going going into my 21st birthday, I then started to get a Mickey Mouse cake. I got, like, a blanket. I got a thing for, like, your head. Um, I got loads of different things with basically Disney on it. Even got, you know, I even got for Christmas... Uh, two Mickey Mouse like head things. You'll see them at the end of the video anyway. Um, from my mum and my sister, which I thought was a bit odd. Anyway, and then and coming back to my birthday, I got loads of different things until it got to about I'd say mid afternoon ish. I had my nan and granddad over, which oh, they're lovely, honestly, fantastic human beings they are. And uh, and uh, and and right, and my sister's boyfriend was over and you know the the party was pretty much going a-okay uh, and then my mum uh, gave me this card and I thought okay this the, this might be something or other anyway so I go to open I go to open this card on, on my birthday and or I, I open it up and and you know my mum's my a very very funny and cheeky human being honestly um, if for those of you who have probably met her, I, I, she's she's very funny, and she came with me on the trip, as you'll find out in the photos. Anyway, um, sorry for knocking this table. I keep doing that. Anyway, uh, going on to the thing, uh, I opened up this envelope, and and in this envelope were tickets for the plane, uh, for for Disneyland Paris, and for the hotel we were staying in, and I was like. Come on, this has got to be a prank. This is—I was—I was nearly close to tears at this point. 
And uh, and anyway, I, I go to see this. I turn the paper around and I say, I'm going to Disneyland Paris with my mum. And everyone started clapping and I nearly lost it. I was like, this is actually a thing. I can't believe my life right now. My luck is incredible. And I was over the moon for the entire day. Like my my mum would tell you. Uh, I was so ecstatic to get up in the morning to go to Disneyland Paris. It was mental. I wanted my birthday to be over just so I could go. <laughs> anyway. Um, and, th and this was all before I got this brand new room as well. So like, this, this was like really early on uh, before we even changed any of this stuff. Anyway, we then, uh, it then got to the... We went from the Sunday, uh, we went from Sunday the, the 15th of January this year to the 18th of uh, January when we came back. So that's what this video is pretty much going to cover. Anyway, um, anyway, it gets to the, uh, it, get, it gets to, it gets to Sunday. I, I literally couldn't sleep. I was so excited, generally. And I, I woke I woke up on the on the Sunday with the biggest flipping smile on my face and the most excitement, like in my in my head. It was incredible. Anyway, I go I go and get ready for the day. I, I packed my bag, I packed my suitcase on on my birthday in the evening, because I thought I don't really want to get up that early and do it on the day I go. Anyway, um, Jesus, five minutes already, bloody hell. Anyway, that's on this recording. Uh, I've I've chopped this video up into several different bits, as you'll find out while you're watching it. So this is probably like I don't know, somewhere quite further along for you, but it's not that further along for me. Anyway, uh, we get I get I get in the car. My dad drives me and my mum down. I was like I was listening to to songs and things all the way down because I I hate car journeys generally. I I do. When I sit in the back of a car, I just think I want to shut off and make, listen to music, and so I was doing that once whilst he was driving down to to Gatwick Airport. It was it was really quiet as well when we got there. Anyway, uh, before we before we jump ahead, Jordan, come on, just keep at the moment. <laughs> and uh, and anyway, we got we got down there, and, and my dad didn't want to pay the the fee. He you know he he wasn't too happy about that that my mum that he made my mum that my mum made him sorry go to uh go to the place where you have to pay but i think down at every exit at Get getwick airport i think you have to pay now i think that's the thing yeah anyway um I, I get I get there and i'm immediately like i want to get i want to i want to get going i, I don't want to be here because I have a fear of height and, uh, and and planes are where it really does settle in a little bit too much but I don't mind flying on planes um, I think planes are lovely once they're in the air but when you're taking off it's terrifying anyway I'll get to that um, anyway we get through I ha have a lovely lunch with, with mum uh, at, uh, at the Weatherspoons in uh, Gatwick Airport it was oh, delicious, lovely we get to we get to the um, we get to putting our, our things on and I had a bit of a kerfuffle really with uh, with taking out like all the toothpaste and stuff out the bags taking my shoes off and and the thing because I thought that you know you didn't have to you know I thought that Mum had put all of the, the the things in her own one just to make it simpler to go through turns out she, that uh, that that she wanted me to pack all of my own stuff so I was like fine uh we went through the the security check in there is so so simple it's incredible we walked through i waited like what three minutes for my mum because she got held up <laughs> which was actually kind of funny that i went straight through and she got held up anyway um we get we get through and uh and we and we make our way to the gate uh, outside of the gate was a picture of the eiffel tower as well i was i, I was like Yes, <laughs> I really hope I get to see that when we fly in, which I did. I'll I'll get to that. Um, anyway, we get we get on the plane and uh, and the plane was lovely. Um, I can't 
I can't really remember who the com- how to pronounce the company, but they but they were absolutely fabulous. Generally, uh, when we sat round about the middle bit of the plane where the wings are, because my mum likes to sit where the wings are. I don't know why, <laughs> but it's cool nonetheless. And at least you're not at the back where you're gonna feel it go. Whoop. <laughs> anyway, uh, we get we get to to the runway, and I'm I'm literally I'm crapping myself right now. Um, I, I'm like, just listen to the music, Jordan. Don't care. Don't look out the window. Don't care about how you know fast it will go and how this that and everything else. I was I was literally I was scared to shit right now. So I had to, and since my music really wasn't working for me, I literally asked my mum to grab my hand and I squeezed it because I was that bloody terrified of going up. But then we, I saw like three other planes go up and that kind of relaxed it a bit because we had to wait for three planes to go. It was quite, it was quite fun. Anyway, um, we went, we got, we got on the plane and... You know, we saw, we saw, as I said, we saw the other three take off and then it was our turn and I was, I was absolutely, I was pooing myself generally. I was like, I'm not ready for this. I, I'm, I'm absolutely horrified because originally I thought if we we're going to Paris, then mum would take the, the Euro tunnel thing, like drive the car onto the Euro tunnel. But I don't, I don't, don't think she did that because, you know, it might have costed a bit more than going on a plane. Anyway, uh, anyway, we... We we go to we go to take we go to take off and uh, and and the plane starts starts speeding up and thing and, I, and I'm I'm going I'm like sitting onto my chair like ah generally I I was absolutely terrified we go we get up in the air the takeoff was fantastic we get up in the air and I thought that you know we're going to be um, we're going to be up for a for for a little bit not too long. Like I was, I was thinking mainly probably about an hour and a half, two hours probably, due to air traffic or something. It turns out we were we were on the plane for the flight time for an hour, which was bloody incredible. That you know, sitting on a plane for an hour just to get from uh, London Gatwick to the uh, airport we were going to, Orly, which turned out to be a curse rather than a blessing. You'll find out. And. Oh my god, it was absolutely, you know, thrilling. We la- we landed the the whole the whole airport over there was immaculate. Luckily enough when we, when we got back at the end of the trip, as you'll find out, my my legs were absolutely knackered and so were my mum's. Like I, I don't know what happened. I think it was because we did the amount of walking that we did because Disneyland Park is actually quite huge. As uh, as I'll talk about in part two in a second, um, but uh, but no, we get we get out of the airport. Trust me, the air, the airport over there is fantastic. Really think Mum should have gone to Charles de Gaulle though, because um, Orly was, uh, as as I'll tell you in a second, quite far away from the hotel and the park that we were going to. So, uh, so yeah, that would that would basically be the uh, the only sort of the only sort of issue I had with the start. Really, I I can't I couldn't believe the way they set it up. It was absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible the way they did it, the way they structured it was absolutely mental. And when my mum said that she she started saving up for it back in like like early summer, I was like, oh my word, generally. Anyway, um. We get as as I was saying, we get out of the airport, and uh, this guy comes over saying, uh, "And Mum's asking for directions. You know, you know how to get to what place, what bus do we need to get to to get to our hotel?" And this man basically takes our takes our bags and he goes, "Follow me, follow me." Anyway, um, we get into the uh, we we get into the we follow this man. Uh, he puts our bags in it in, in his taxi. And he drives us, and my mum was in bits by the time we got to the hotel, because it cost her nearly, I think, half of the money she took, I think, just to get from the airport to the hotel. It was shocking. And we found out later that we could have just taken the magic shuttle for 23 euro, 23 euro, right? 
and uh, and and then got on a free shuttle bus to the hotel, and I was absolutely gobsmacked because I think the um, I think it did go above a hundred euro. It was it was bloody insane. Anyway, we we get to the we get to the hotel, and this is where I'm going to cut off and meet you in part two. Ciao. <laughs> anyway, now that we're in part two, I'm going to talk about you know the trip itself before going and then I'll, and I'll show photos when we actually get into the park because we didn't take any photos of the hotel uh, we only took photos from inside the park but we also took videos but I can't show the videos in this video because of copyright and I don't really want this video to be copyrighted with Disney music because that would be sad anyway um, anyway we get to our uh, we get to our hotel and the hotel not gonna lie look like it's ripped straight out of a 1930s film it was amazing every like there were video panels everywhere there was you know the 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 lobby itself was red and like you know the people in there they didn't they spoke french and english which was a really big help because then we didn't have to learn any french <laughs> so that was good and uh, anyway we go and basically then we we find we find our we get our key to our room and we we go up our room was on the very top floor <laughs> which again uh made for some great views when we were going to go to bed but when we weren't there we had to we we kept the the window shut and when we got back the room was toasting it was absolutely boiling anyway uh but i'm not going to talk that much about the hotel because the hotel did have some faults but i don't really want to go into it because i don't want to dampen what is quite a good hotel at this point and plus they had free shelves to disney so big up <laughs> anyway uh we got we got to our we got to our room and uh and yeah uh we already spotted one mistake. I, I will mention uh, two of the mistakes, but uh, but I won't mention them all to great detail because I quite like the hotel and didn't really have a dampener of a time there, really. Anyway, um, we go. I go ahead. I go out. Uh, we go. I go out. Sorry, I'm probably gonna cut that out. No, actually, I'm not gonna cut out. You know. That much of this video, <laughs> I don't think. If I if I make a mistake, then probably. But if I if I do, well, I I I don't really care. <laughs> anyway, um, we go we go in in our in our room. The the first mistake I I will sort of mention is that the bath was broken. The bath was uh, didn't fill up because someone had obviously broken the plug. Anyway. To work around this, me and me and my mum at different points of the of the day when we weren't at Disney because we were there pretty much all day <laughs> when we actually got there. Uh, but on the night that we actually got to the hotel, uh, we had to uh, pretty much fill up the bath, which I don't, and keep it running while we were in it because otherwise it would just shrink. Anyway, um, I don't know what the people next to us were thinking. I've I'm I'm really hoping they weren't really angry with us because you know there was literally nothing we could do with the bath. Um, to to have a shower was fine, but to have a bath, uh, you had to pretty much keep it running because the tap because the the plug was pretty much broken. It was kind of barbaric, really. Anyway, uh, we we sit we sat we sat on the bed after talking to. After talking to my family who were back here at the time, and we go, and and I and the next thing we decide to do is to go for dinner because we were both quite hungry and we thought, well, there's a buffet downstairs. Let's go and pay for that and, and go and try that. Uh, and here comes the second mistake: every single bit of food that wasn't meant to be cold was freezing. I don't I don't mean to say this is like a you know a negative because I quite like the hotel but for the first 2 days we were there pretty much everything cooked was frozen 
And I think it was because... I think, you know, it, it was because their heaters weren't working properly or something. I mean, I, I didn't really care. I just ate it anyway because I, I needed food. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, I, I really did need the sort of uh, thing... Actually, come coming to think about it, I might actually put the photos at the end of the video after I show you all the stuff because you know then you can see all the photos and and all the stuff I got pretty much in order. But I will talk about um, I will put the photos in order of what I talk about them in here. I think because we're gonna go get to that soon ish. Anyway, um, we go uh, go go to sleep after that. Uh, that sort of mishap. Uh, the sleep, the the bed, the bed, the room was absolutely boiling because literally no air was coming into it unless you opened up the giant window at the back of the at the back of the room. The room looked lovely as well. It had like an illuminated moon and balloons everywhere uh, that weren't specifically for me, but they were like illuminated things that you know would like sit in the corner of rooms like lamps almost. And it, and it was really cool. Anyway, um, uh, I also uh, just to, just want to add, I wore this to Disney as well because of course I did. I mean, I'm a Disney nerd. <laughs> anyway, um, we go we go to sleep. Wake up in the morning. We woke up really early because I wanted to get there for park open because they because Disney are not like any other theme park where they have like when you get there really really early, the rides are basically non like not got massive queues and you know they've also got this welcome dance party that comes out in the uh, in front of the castle in the mornings and I didn't want to miss that so I said come on let's let's go we got there we got there an hour after park open which was absolutely you know great time because we walked no no that was on the second day sorry uh on the on the first day we got there for Parker open uh we were sitting we were standing there for 30 minutes in the rain uh because the park hadn't literally opened they said it was opening at half nine that day we got there for nine uh we got we got all our bags checked and everything the bag check is, is so so much simpler like it's so bet it's so good now you can just literally put your things down go walk through and that's it what and and Props to the security team because they were fantastic. Every staff member at this theme park was immaculate. They didn't want to ruin the magic like at all. And that I can only, you know, prove and, and, and give them a clap with loads of with loads of praise because genuinely they were absolutely fantastic. It doesn't matter what park you were in, where you were on the Disney site, all of them were fantastic. And I I have to, you know say that out loud because you know oh my god I, i'll get to some of the interactions later on but oh my god it was fantastic they did an amazing job while while i was there it was brilliant anyway you go in and you know and basically to get into the disneyland park there's the giant disneyland paris sort of hotel that was being renovated at the time i think it's still being renovated now because I think there was a post that came out the other day that said it was not opening until 2024. Which proved out to be a massive big up for me and mum. Because then when we got in the park, there were no hotel guests in the park. Meaning that the queues were basically nothing. Which was fantastic. And exactly what I wanted to happen. Anyway, we got we got in the park and, and we walked down. We went into every shop on Main Street. You have, You don't understand. Like, as soon as I got into the park, I went into the first store I could see, which was, like, this boutique store. And I bought my book. Which, uh, I'll get on to, uh, who I got signed in the book, uh, when, when I show that off later on. Um, and I also got the pen, as well, which has Mickey Mouse on the top. It's, oh, come on, come on, webcam focus, generally. Um... You know, and it's it's got this really quite nice design. Uh, it's quite a good pen, actually. I I paid like I think a euro for it, and then uh, I think I think nine euros for the book itself, which uh, turned out to be ten euros, and that that was good. That that was that that was good as well. Is that pretty much I thought everything was going to be overpriced because of Disney, 
turns out later on as you'll find out that I don't that I have more than what I thought I would have which is absolutely fabulous anyway we go we go into the uh, once we get into the down main street they're doing the party down at the, down at the bottom of the castle I didn't take I didn't ask mum or take any videos of, of it myself because I did take my camera but all the photos I have on there are, are basically near enough better on my mum's phone which are all the, where I took all the photos from that I'll show at the end of the video um, because this video is going to be super long anyway <laughs> And I hope that uh, that you guys up to this point are still watching and quite enjoy it. Uh, anyway, we go we go in we go down Main Street and the first play the first ride I wanted to do originally was the Dumbo ride because when my mum went the first time, uh, that was the only ride she could go on. So at the time because that, because she was carrying me but at early stage, I think. Anyway, um, we go in. Uh, I wanted to do Dumbo first, and I said this on my birthday, but we ended up not going into Fantasyland until much later on the first day. And the first ride we went on was Phantom Manor in Frontierland, which was ba it's basically like a shortened clone of the Haunted Mansion from the American parks. But, my God, as soon as I walked out, as soon as I saw the outside of the attraction going into the inside, the attention to detail in basically everything inside the park was a hundred percent like on point there was not a an area of the park where you thought oh this is just a business area this is where the cast members walk in to go backstage no everything was bright colorful and you know the atmosphere was incredible like you could walk anywhere in the park and the music would change basically to base where you're standing which was absolutely amazing. So, like, you'd walk into Frontierland and it would be, like, the western bit for the big Thunder Mountain, which was absolutely, you know, fantastic. And then as soon as you walked more towards Phantom Manor, which I have... A, my mum took a photo of it, which... Oh, the photo's brilliant, by the way. Um, as, so, as soon as she... We took all the photos on the on the second day. We didn't really do that much on the first day because we wanted to really more soak it in. And so we took some photos on... My mum took some photos on the first day, but then she took, like, double the amount on the second day because, you know, she wanted to get in basically everything that we saw the day before, which was quite cool, where she also recorded the parades and the fireworks show. The fireworks show, I'll get to that, because, oh, my word. Anyway, going back to... Uh, going back to Phantom Manor, we got, we we went up to it, and as you go up to it, it turns more from the western music of where Big Thunder Mountain is, and you start hearing werewolves, and it starts getting really quite creepy. And I was like, the atmosphere here is fantastic, especially at night, because at night around Phantom Manor, all of the lights show like turn on, and you know like different sort of bits light up, and it's absolutely incredible to look at at night. I have to I have to recommend that if you're ever going to Disneyland Paris don't leave after the parades walk around the park and uh, and go and experience it at night it's breathtaking generally like it's much different at night to at the daytime especially with Phantom Manor anyway we go up the queue the queue was the queue was 5 minutes but the queue was non-existent there was literally no one in the queue so I was like oh this is brilliant what I didn't know is that the queue in, like, continued inside the house itself. I thought as soon as you get in the house, the ride's going to begin. And it's going to be all inside that house with a little show building at the back. No, that's not Disney's forte here. Um, that I came to realise as soon as we got in the house. Anyway, um, as we were going up the queue, the, the queue for Phantom, Phantom Manor was absolutely fantastic. There was gravestones everywhere. It was really eerie. And I thought, is this going to be actually quite creepy? I went up, we went through like the different gardens. Even the plants around the area were fantastic. Like it didn't take you out of the atmosphere at all. Anyway, you go up and uh, there's this at Disney. They do at Disneyland Paris. They have these turnstiles that I that I realised that basically you can't go back through as soon as you go through them. So effectively, you have to go on the ride as soon as you go as soon as you go through them. Meaning that you know. There's no, like, people that just give up and want to leave. 
and especially as I found out when you get in the house anyway, because we rode this attraction twice. We won't we. Ro- we, we rode it as our first ride on day one, and we rode it in the evening on day two. And I, and I'm gonna talk about basically both experiences at the same point because you know then it'll hopefully make this video a little bit shorter. I'm looking down at the bottom and I'm just thinking, Jesus, this is gonna be one long video. But you're in for the ride, I guess. Anyway, uh, we go we go into the. Um, into the building itself and the building the facade looked really looked really creepy in itself and you'll see that in the video in the photo when i show you at the end of the video um but uh but anyway you enter the house and the house just looks like a normal manor it's you know it looks like it's for posh people you know you look like you're in a quite uptight sort of area uh then the whole pre-show starts and the pre-show lasts for so long but the pre-show is incredible, as I'll explain now. Basically, you go into the, uh, you wait. If you're not in a group, then basically you just get to go on there on like pretty much on your own fashion, pretty much. But they usually do start the pre-show when you've got quite a significant group. Uh, anyway, the pre-show begins, and the um, the French version of the ghost host, which they'd also talk in French and English, and the English was provided by a. Uh, an actor called Vincent Price, which I only found out when we left. I could have recorded the ride because, you know, um, Disney allow recordings on certain rides, but they don't um, allow recordings on many rides, uh, unlike Universal that don't have any recording on any ride whatsoever. So when that ride is gone, it's basically no photography unless they allow you to, which... Disney are not like that, and I 100% applaud them for that. Because that means that, you know, you know, if you're actually doing a vlog and there's a ride that you can record on, you can take people on it, and it's fantastic. And all my life, I grew up with people's recordings of the rides, but going on them is completely different to watching it. Uh, because, you know, you get that 360 pretty much immersion of every single scene as you're going around. As in on Phantom Manor, you'd go into like the bit, the 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 sort of room stretching scene where the paintings would stretch, and on a video it looks like it's, you know, it looks like it's basically a box. That room is actually quite a large elevator. That then, uh, as it descends, you can actually see more of the painting come down, and then they're not all like pretty much in a line they're all basically sporadically around this circle as it descends and you know and then you go into the different hallways and you see the 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 lightning and the paintings change and the whole the whole ride wasn't was exactly like the way i thought a disney ride would go but being there and actually being on it was a big difference to actually watching it because you'll find that most of the rides that i will talk about coming up i've not actually seen a video of so i had absolutely no idea what was going to be on them and that was true with phantom manor i had no idea what you know was going to be on the actual ride itself because when you're in that elevator shaft and you're walking through the hallways and things you're not actually on the ride that's still part of the queue which i thought was absolutely mental and then you get on the ride and like you'd see like the different effects and things like there was a piano that was playing by itself. I've no idea how they did that, to be honest. It it was incredible though when we looked at it. I was like, how the hell are they doing that? Like, it was absolutely flipping incredible. Anyway, uh, and you you go round and and you know you see this bride, you see the phantoms, and oh, it was brilliant. Especially when you saw Madame Leota in the ball, and then you saw the ballroom scene with all of the ghosts dancing. That was fantastic. And funny enough, I know how that works, but I'm not really going to spoil that because, you know, I'll let you have a guess. <laughs> anyway, we go, uh, af- after we come off Phantom Manor, which mum has a very, very funny uh, Im- impression of. Because uh, as you're going to get off Phantom Manor, the bride shows up next to all the men, pretty much, and says, will you marry me? Which I thought was really just funny. <laughs> And my my mum made it made all the rides pretty much ten times better because she was laughing on pretty much every one we went on, 
which then started me laughing, which then made it quite a good time overall. Anyway, uh, we we come out we come out of Phantom Manor and uh, and then, and the next thing we did was we walked around Frontierland. We basically walked around pretty much every area because we wanted to get it all, you know, in and take it all in. Anyway, we walk around this corner and we see Goofy and uh, and as you'll see at the end of the the video with the photos of Goofy, uh, he did actually sign my book, which I think I'll show you now just because you know it's it's there. Uh, here's Goofy's signature. Uh, he was in a cowboy outfit at the time, which you'll see at the end. And anyway, but the um, but oh my god, the the character interactions there weren't that many, which I I thought was a bit of a a, a bit sad that there weren't as many as like the American parks or you know out in Japan. But you know for what there was for what quality of rides there was as well as the shows it didn't really bother me that much because you didn't really see much of the characters anyway like i think out of my entire trip i got two signatures in the book i just showed you um and i got and i, I saw like two characters walking around in disneyland park and then i saw like double the amount in the studios park but the studios park was smaller and we only went there on the second day because it was half a day Anyway, um, anyway, after after we we saw Goofy and we took a load of photos with Goofy, which you, uh, you you'll see at the end. Anyway, I saw Goofy twice in two different outfits. It was incredible, uh, just standing out in the park and walking around. On the parades, he was wearing something completely different. But that's on a parade, so you know I'm I'm saying that that's a completely different you know Goofy to what was standing in the parks. Anyway, um. We come around, we got lost a bit at the end of Frontierland because we saw the theatre where the Lion King plays, but it wasn't playing at any times where we were like, oh, let's just go in and see that. And I'm not really a big fan of the Lion King anyway, a little bit of an unpopular opinion, I know. But yeah, there's there's only two Disney films I don't actually fully get on with, uh, being Mulan and the Lion King, because I, I don't know. I like the animation, but I just can't get on with the film for some reason. It's just not my taste, I, I think. Anyway... Um, anyway, we come out of Frontierland after looking for Phantom Manor merchandise because I was like, I really want to get a pin or something of the ride. Turns out all they had was pretty much t-shirts and statues, which I was like, mm, I, I want, I want a pin because I, because for those of you that, that don't know, I have a pin, uh, I have a pin badge jacket that looks like, uh, Martin Flyers from Back to the Future. Which, funny enough, I, I I took that to when I watched the musical a few months ago, which that might be a video coming up as well. I think I might review that, even though it was back in October I did that. Anyway, um, but if, you, if you'd if you like to see that, then just comment below or, you know, like the video. That would boost me to do more reviews and things, because I, I think the next one I'm doing, I think I might do the Mario movie on Friday, I think. Like, next Friday. When, I, when my schedule really does start to go into place. Anyway, I'm getting off track here. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, we, go, we come out of Frontierland and all the lands are pretty much connected. Like you can walk from Frontierland into Adventureland to Fantasyland to Discoveryland uh, because they don't have Tomorrowland over there. I'll get to that though. Uh, we go into Adventureland and we, we see Pirates of the Caribbean. And I didn't do Pirates of the Caribbean on the trip partially because... The weather was absolutely cold and it was an indoor water ride. And I thought, how many times are you going to actually get wet on the ride? Uh, which led me to not go on it at all. Which I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of a bit upset about because when I saw uh, that, that Johnny, Jack, Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow was in it, I was like, oh, I could have gone on that now. Come on. But instead, we went, we went, into, fan we went into Fantasyland and we went into and we saw like the Dumbo ride, the Alice in Wonderland labyrinth because they haven't got a dark ride of Alice in Wonderland there like all the other ones. They've got a labyrinth, which is quite interesting. I, my mum took loads of photos of both of us in that labyrinth, and you know, and we and we did that anyway. We go. Uh, I did Dumbo. I, I did do Dumbo. We did it twice. Um, it was really funny. We also had a really funny get, uh, staff interaction with mum. <laughs> Is that mum didn't put on her seatbelt in the Dumbo thing. 
the first time around. This is funny. I'm I'm good. This is why I'm telling it really. And the staff member came round and 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 went. You need to put <laughs> you need to put a seatbelt on. And Mum was like, I don't know where the plug-in is. And he said, Oh, it's over the it's over the left side. Anyway, and he said, "Yeah, don't do anything funny because I'll be watching you." And he, and as we left the ride as well, he did he did this <laughs> to to my mum, which we couldn't just but bur- we couldn't stop but burst out laughing. It wasn't like creepy in any way. It was a basic joke, which I thought was absolutely funny. And anyway, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. After we went to um, after we did Dumbo, we did the magic teacups. Uh, which was literally right next door and had like a really short wait time. So we, we jumped on that bandwagon. And I'm not a very big fan of teacups, but coupled with the music, which I only saw Alice in Wonderland a year ago, I think. I watched it with my sister a year ago for the first time because I'd grow, I'd, I'd watched Tim Burton's version, but I hadn't watched the cartoon. And I watched the cartoon luckily before we went. And, oh, that was... The cartoon is great. Uh, and the ride, I don't like teacups that much, but when it came to the uh, the mad tea teacup party, I think that's what it was called anyway. Um, Mum didn't spin it because I get pretty nauseous when things spin and you're still spinning. It r- makes me go a little bit. Uh, anyway, so but uh, but but going on that ride i thought yeah this is actually quite a unique teacup ride because instead of just going around on a loop uh, where you're stuck to like four other vehicles you go around the entire thing it's like a flipping trackless like sort of thing where the cup then decides where you're going which i thought was absolutely fantastic because you, you weren't staying in the same spot and just to let you know we went on the we went on the um the the purple uh, teacup because my mum's favorite color is purple and i just thought why not Anyway, after the after we did that, we went into um, we went we went into the. Uh, I think did we do the labyrinth or did we see Mickey Mouse first? I think we saw. I think I'll talk about both, but yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll go to we'll I'll, I'll go and do Mickey Mouse first. I think we walked into the Mickey Mouse theater because instead of Mickey Mouse just being out and about, he was in this specific place, and we thought, oh, that's fantastic because then you know we'll go and we'll go there. When we got when we walked up to the theatre itself, the wait time was over an hour. And I was like, I don't care, I'm going to see Mickey Mouse. We joined it. We were in the queue for about an hour and 40 minutes, I think. Um, but luckily there were like f- uh, French and English Mickey Mouse cartoons from like the 30s playing on this little screen in the theatre. And, you know, there were, like, different photos, which you'll see the photos of, like, the different characters and the posters that were showing on the big screen. Uh, Because my mum took a photo of pretty much every single one. Uh, She also took a photo of every single pose that I did with Mickey Mouse when we actually got into his office to meet him. And he was really funny because he would would look at... He'd take a picture with people, but because it's Mickey Mouse, he didn't, like like just do one and then move on he spent like a good like two minutes with them which was absolutely fabulous that he was taking his time with it which i was like that's just brilliant because that is worth now waiting an hour to go and see him anyway we get to him and i did like what four different poses with him we ended up getting uh, a photo which i'll show at the end it's it's just underneath him in that pocket over there and uh and, and and anyway, we go into uh, we we come out after after seeing him. Seeing him, he was really funny. He'd, he'd peer over like his um, suitcases and things and look at us and wave, which I thought was really cute. And the fact that all of the books on like all of the books in his office were references to like the different things. Like I I took I asked mum to take a photo of one of them, but I haven't I haven't put that on the. Um, uh, end of the video thing so i'll tell you anyway there was one that had like steamboat willy on it there was one that had like fan fantasia there was one that had phantasmic there was one that you know referenced the florida park there was it was absolutely mental the in the detail not to mention his hat and robes from uh, from fantasia were like on a hook in his office as well anyway uh when we got out we did uh, the Alice Alice's Curious Labyrinth because yes, 
even though it was it was raining at the time we still did it anyway because we knew that all of the people were going to go into the dark rides and then you know the wait times would be flipping you know like the weather so um and i think by the time we we ended up doing a dark ride the, the weather had cleared up so that was great uh, we did. We went around the the curious labyrinth. Now there was two sections to this labyrinth. There was the normal one, where like you saw like the white rabbit. You saw the Cheshire cat. You'll see all of the photos in a in a bit because we took the photos of the entire thing. And uh, and then you'd see like this seagull dude in the middle. I can't. I don't know what his name is. Generally, if you if if you know, I I put a photo of him at the end with me in it. Uh, if you know what that seagull's character's name is. Uh, then it would be really helpful if you put it down in the comments because I have no idea what his name is. So I just called him Seagull when we, when we saw him. Uh, there was a giant um, Cheshire Cat Topiary at the background as well, which we took a photo of. And then the, the, the place, and then the maze pretty much split off into like two different things where you could exit into like the rest of Fantasyland. Or you could uh, go off into the Queen of Hearts section, which had all the cards. It had the Queen. It had her castle. And basically, the, the whole thing would end when you're climbing to the top of her, her castle. We got all the way to the top of the castle. And our legs, when we went down the stairs, just died. We literally... we There wasn't that many benches. Which, again, was a bit of a problem for me. Because I have this... I have dyspraxia in my legs, like I talked about in my previous video. Which then, you know, I can't walk for more than two and a half hours without taking a break, because otherwise my legs just feel like concrete. <laughs> anyway, it's the best sort of analogy I can I can put it. Anyway, we walked down these stairs and both of our legs just lost it. So the next thing we, we did is we thought, nope, we'll go and find a chair and we'll go and get a snack. We went we went out of Fantasyland, we went out of the castle, we went out of pretty much the the whole main bit of fantasy then we went back to main street and we found this um this bakery where i got a nice mickey donut which i which i took a photo of and was actually quite nice the chocolate in it was um nutella which was quite you know quite amazing that you know you'd eat it and it and it'd be like nutella anyway i got a tea i got a cup of tea with that as well which oh, flipping do you know the the whole paris trip made me fall in love with fruit tea i still drink it today that's how that's how incredible the, the thing was is that I do it I, I drink fruit tea because I had it at the hotel and I also you know it rem, it reminds me of going out to do you know all of pretty much what we did in those days that we were there anyway after we did that uh, there was there was a parade that they were getting prepared for so we watched a, a nice parade um, I can't remember what the name of it was I don't it wasn't the the stars on parade because that was before the fireworks and the D light, which I'll show you. I'll show you photos of later. Um, but the parade was the parade was cool. Uh, the parade was very very nice. Anyway, um, we went back into uh, from from that point we went we went back into um, uh, we went back. We went to Discovery Land next, where I was going to go on Autopia, but the ride was shut down because of all the rain and the fact that I didn't really want to get a wet ass while sitting in a car. <laughs> anyway, uh, we go we go in to do all of that, and it was absolutely fabulous. Uh, we went in, and I I needed Lou. So I went to Lou and then I said to mum, do you want to go on Star Tours? Because that was right next door and was like a five minute queue. So we were like, hell yeah. So we went in, mum took a photo of the ship, which I ended up buying the same ship that we were in for my dad as a gift. Because my dad is a is a very big uh, Star Wars fan. He's a, he's a very big sci-fi fan in general, but he quite likes Star Wars a bit. So I thought, oh, I might as well get in the ship that we went on in the ride. Because that would be an easy present. Anyway, um, we did that on the second day. By the way, uh, we went we went on Star Tours. I got Hoff and Nabu, I think, but and I also got Darth Vader picking us up at the start of the which was absolutely incredible. The whole ride, yes, was in French, but it was still Star Wars and it was still epic. And the fact that it was in three D as well was actually a bonus. 
Anyway, we come off of that and, and we're like, right, what should we do now? We look over at um, uh, Disney's, uh, Mickey's PhilharMagic, which is like a 3D show, which I can only compare to in the UK, an episode of Tom and Jerry, because the whole show is basically Donald chasing after Mickey's magic hat for him to do this orchestra at the end. And he goes for like different Disney films and, and things. And it was actually really funny. Like, and luckily we caught it on the last screening of the day, which was absolutely fantastic. Anyway, we come, we come out of there and it started raining again. And we were like, oh, for God's sake, probably not going to be any fireworks then tonight. Because Disney put, don't put on the fireworks if it's raining quite heavy. Anyway, we come, we come out of there and we decide that, you know, we're going to watch the last parade and then we're going to go for tea. Because it was around like five five o'clock at this point. The park was shutting at eight. And so we went, uh, we watched the Disney stars on parade for the, fir the first time in forever. Sorry for the frozen reference. Um, and the parade, the parade was fantastic. There was, a there was a Maleficent dragon that would breathe fire, which was absolutely brilliant. And I've got a photo of it normally and in it breathing fire, which I show at the end in you know sort of order uh i then you know put in i then put uh we then we then had we then found out that our dinner rev reservation was actually at a hotel which was on the other side of the disney resort so me and mum we didn't know how to get there so we had to ask these french people how to get there which then they couldn't really help us because they wouldn't really speak english anyway um we ended up finding it was at the new port bay club which was over the other side of the hotel bit and they were doing you know pasta fish pretty much everything but everything was like a mission style degree like you know you, you pay like 45 euro for this for the buffets and you can eat all much that you can but basically everything that is served up is michelin style which, you know, shows that they have got a dedication to food as well as everything else on top. Anyway, we go in, we, we get a night, our, our waiter was called, was called Mark and he was a, he was a lovely guy. I, I, I can only put so much, um, you know, thank yous into everyone because, you know, all of them were amazing. We ended up giving him a tip at the end of the night because of the fact he was so good anyway we ended up we en we ended up uh, coming out of there and uh, and we missed the fireworks show entirely which i was like oh thank god for that but on our way forwards and back we sh we saw like all of the shops in disney village which we spent more time down there at like, the end of the second day because you know we weren't really thinking of buying things on day 1 <laughs> So, uh, but we saw one thing we did see is that, that I I was absolutely shocked by is that there was a absolutely humongous McDonald's down there. Like, I think it's the biggest McDonald's I've ever seen in my life. And I thought, Jesus Christ, get a photo of that thing because I want to compare it to all the McDonald's we have back in the UK. And our ones are like really diddy. This one, when you see the photo, is bloody huge. <laughs> it's absolutely massive. It was like three layers. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up not we, we didn't go in it we just thought we'd just take a photo because obviously we have I wanted to try more French stuff because you're out in France why would you want to try English and American stuff doesn't make any sense does it anyway we go back to the, the hotel I, I had a, another night uh, another another good bit of sleep and then we and then on the second day we basically did every we did our favourite rides that we did on the first day like we did the Buzz Lightyear ride, which I forgot to talk about that. Sorry. I beat mum on the Buzz Lightyear ride. And we also went to the studios park and everything was basically like near enough exactly the same level. I'm trying to, you know, shorten it because I'm seeing the time and I'm thinking, Jesus, this video is going to be long. Uh, so apologies. Um, we're going... Uh, we, got, we were going through and um, basically knocking off every single ride that we hadn't done. Uh, and then we got to the end of the day. And the end of the day is fireworks show and delight. I was absolutely bewildered and gobsmacked by. It was fucking amazing. Sorry for... Actually, I, I can't really say sorry for my French. 
I literally said at the start of the video, I might swear. So <laughs> there you go. Um, it was absolutely incredible. The fireworks, the projection mapping on the castle, the waterfalls, everything was immaculate. It was the best way to finish the Disney trip and I finished it on my Nan's birthday as well. So sadly I couldn't spend time with me Nan. We had, anyway, we ended we ended up the day. The, the studios part was fantastic. It was half a day as I thought it would be. Uh, you'll see more of... Um, we, we did... In that studios park alone, we went to Avengers Campus. We did the Ratatouille area. We did the Toy Story area. My one went on a Cars ride that was terrifying. But I had to sit at the sidelines because I didn't want to go on the bloody thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, and, then, and then obviously we, we went back into the, the original part later on and, you know, got into, you know, and did basically everything we missed apart from pirates. Sorry, pirates. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we we came we came back on the Wednesday and my legs were absolutely killing uh, themselves by the time we got back to the airport. Anyway, we we flew back we flew back home. Flying back was much better than flying out because I I knew that I was going to be flying back, so I basically set myself up and anticipated myself for that. Anyway, um, and the whole trip was. 10 out of 10 all the way through I can't fault anyone I can e I can even say I had an amazing time with my mum which you know I do pretty much multiple things with me mum um but I'm and I'm hoping to do something with my dad sooner or later I think I I, I really want to go watch Wicked with him uh which you know I, I don't know if, really if that's any good but I've heard the music and the music's fire so anyway I think that's enough talking about the trip itself because then we just went back home and I and I was, you know, so happy. So I think I'll stop this section here and then uh, go and uh, cut, cut into the next section where I'm uh, showing off all the stuff that I got and, you know, pretty much all the stuff from the setup as well. Uh, so I'll, I'll see you. I will see you then uh, in two seconds for you but like probably like 10 minutes for me so uh see see you then right and welcome to part three which has only taken me five minutes to, to get everything in there now that i've seen the uh, the thing uh i'm now gonna this is the part where basically i'm going to show off uh all of the stuff i got uh for from for all of the setup stuff and all of uh, the stuff I actually got at the park uh, to then show off all of the the photos. The photos probably won't have any audio because I don't want to get copyright struck, but you will you will see basically every single thing that I talked about. Anyway, um, let's start off with uh, with, with Christmas. Uh, for Christmas, uh, first thing I I got that was a big tease is I I got this little this little Pluto, <laughs> which when you press his paw, if you can see down here, his uh, his cheeks light up, which is quite cool to be honest. I mean, he hasn't got no tail anymore because my brother's dog is an asshole. <laughs> but you know, he, he's he's quite a good plush. Um, I also got, uh, I also got a couple of things like I got this Mickey blanket for my birthday, which has got Mickey all in different parts all over. It's quite cool, really. Uh, the only the only real f and then. I got the bedding for, for for Christmas as well, which has, it's basically just Mickey Mouse bedding. I can't really show all of it because, you know, all of it is over there, but effectively the, the bottom of the case is exactly the same as the back of the pillow, which I'll just turn around and show you. It's, it's basically a collection of loads of different Mickey Mouses walking, which is quite good. And also my sister and my mum got me a giant uh, Mickey pillow, which I, I think that's kind of cool to be honest. Uh, I also got uh, a gla uh, two glasses, uh, which are quite cool. This this did have hot chocolate in it. I've not actually used these cups yet. As the time of me releasing this video, which is going to be later on today that I'm recording it, uh, I haven't actually used these glasses yet um, because I haven't. You know, I've only really I've not. Them out or anything. I, I want to keep them really as collectibles rather than use them 
because you know I don't I don't really want anything to go in with my item that much I think I uh, I should keep them like this but clean them out every once in so often so they don't get dusty uh, this one if, if I put it up to the camera a little bit you can see it has mini Mickey Donald and Goofy and a load of different trees because I got this at Christmas time uh, this was in the UK by the way it's a place I think it was Primark that was selling these uh, then obviously on the original Mickey one, there's just an old Mickey face saying Merry Christmas, and it comes with a spoon. I don't know. Um, I also have a water bottle that is that has like uh, Mickey over it, but I couldn't find that for the, for this video. I think it's down there. I think. Hold on, I'll um, I'll do a cut now to see if I can find it. Okay, so lucky enough, I did find it. Uh, here you go. I got all of this from for, for Christmas and birthday before I move into the actual park itself. Anyway, um, that's pretty much everything I got for Christmas and birthday. Uh, here's another thing I got for my birthday as well. Uh, which, you know, mum wanted to, to give me pretty much just before um, I went as like a final teaser almost. Which was very clever. Anyway, uh, now it's time to get into the park. Uh, the first thing I'd like to show off uh, is on my pin badge jacket here, which, to be honest, I'm probably going to wear in one of these vlogs at one stage. Uh, I got two pin badges here, but I might as well just I might as well just show all of them. Um, I've got uh, the Walt. Uh, I'll have to you know try and angle it. This is going to be horrible. Trust me. Uh, I got Walt Disney Studios pinned down there. That was about six euro, I think. But I quite liked it because it's got a little bit of a glitter effect and it's embossed and I quite like it a bit. Uh, as you can see, I've got flipping crap tons of pins that I've just collected over the last like, year or so. Um, and then on the other side, because you know Disneyland Paris is in a completely different country, I've got uh, that one which says Disneyland Paris and has the Earful Tower, the castle, Sorcerer Apprentice Mickey and 2023 on it because then I, uh, then it shows I went in 2023 and that's quite cool. But that's basically all the pins I got. I was tempted on getting this set, uh, Snow White and Seven Dwarves pin with all the Seven Dwarves on it, but I thought, nah, that's a bit too expensive for me. And to be honest, they had no Muppet ones as well, which I'm kind of a bit sad about because I'm a big fan of the Muppets. Uh, I have, I've watched all their films countless times and I have a book on Jim Henson's life, which is in the background. You can probably see it. It's, it's that exposed book there. Uh, anyway, uh, going on to the other autograph because I forgot to show that off when I talked about it. Uh, I did get an autograph of uh, of the main, the main mouse man himself, uh, Mickey Mouse. There you go, if you can see that. Yeah, the book is actually really cool. It's got uh, all the characters on the front drawing, which uh, that in English says autograph book. I looked it up on Google Translate. <laughs> uh, on the back, it's got it's got Stitch ripping some of the pages out, and it's also got the castle in the. It's got the Earful Tower and the castle, and it's quite cool. On the inside, if you didn't get all of them. You still get all of their signatures in in here, which is quite good. And yes, I did put the book. This autograph book belongs to me because I'm very funny. Anyway, uh, that's the book and the pen that I showed at the in the other part of the video, but might as well just show them again here because I got them at the park. Uh, next thing, uh, after I showed that autograph of Mickey Mouse, I might as well show you the official photo I got of uh, both of him with both me and my mum. Uh, uh, you, you ready? Uh, here, here it is. It's a, it's a fabulous photo, generally. I think mum paid about 11 euro for it, which I, I love it to bits, generally. It's, it's even got his signature down at the bottom, which is quite good. And I'm keeping it in this, um, in this paper thing so that one day I can get a frame and put it in a frame. <laughs> Because, oh god, it's lovely. Anyway, um, time to get on to uh, to the plushies. Uh, I got uh, old timey wimey Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, 
not Mickey Mouse. Come on, Jordan, you you know your Disney characters. Um, my my brother's dog did have a bit of a issue with the skirt, obviously, because he, he ripped a bit out of the skirt and obviously ripped her tail off, which is kind of a bit annoying. But she was the cheapest. She was like, what, six, five, six euro for that size? Which, as you'll come to find out, there were, there were you know, ones that are bigger that had much better size. Anyway, uh, that's Minnie Mouse. Um, you could only really get these uh, for, a, for a limited time because, obviously, when we went, uh, Disneyland Paris was in its 30th anniversary still. So I, I had to... I went to go look for Mickey Mouse as well, but uh, I couldn't find him, and I was absolutely upset because you can't get him on the Disney store either, which is kind of a bit of a shame. But maybe if I if I ever go out there again, I'll I'll find him again. Uh, but there's Minnie Mouse. Uh, she's she's quite she's quite cool. Anyway, um, let's let's move on uh, to Mickey Mouse. Now this guy was twenty euro, and he is absolutely huge. Like his ears are he'll, his ears also do fold, which is kind of a bit annoying. But I do quite like it to be honest. Um, I can do quite a lot with him. I can go like, hello, <laughs> and thing, and and he's quite, he's quite nice to 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 cuddle in bed. Really, I think his, the material is really soft as well. Like all of the the plushies from Disneyland are really soft. They're made of the material. I don't know if you'd be able to pick it up on camera actually. No, I don't think you can. Oh, that's a shame. Um, they're made from this material that is really soft. And he's absolutely incredible. So uh, that's Mickey Mouse. Um, obviously, I, I showed I showed Pluto, but he'll move past the screen now because I'm going to put him down there. Uh, the next character was a character I didn't even think they would do because he wasn't even like represented in any of the rides or like mer some of the merchandise. There was only one place where I actually saw this guy, and I have a story behind this guy because um, when I was in year six. Uh, doing a year six production, I did the Jungle Book about ten years ago. Ten years, Jesus Christ, that makes me shocked. Anyway, um, uh, I played Baloo the Bear in the Jungle Book for one scene because my scene was basically the same length as Baloo in the rest of the show, and I was sharing the part with uh, one of my friends at the time. Uh, 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 at the at the school, so she would take the rest of the show while I would just do this big scene, and so uh, I had my mum said, uh, and, uh, and and I had to basically in the end uh, pick up a nice blue the bear plushie, and he's absolutely huge, like he's 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 absolutely massive. Generally, I saw him at like the Adventureland sort of safari shop, and it was the only place I saw him. Which I was like, oh, I'm so happy that that was the only place I saw of him. You know, it has got all the plushies have got the uh, the Disneyland Paris logo on the bottom of them. Uh, but no, this this guy, this guy, because I played the part back ten years ago, in my year six end production, uh, he means a lot to me, and he's still probably my favourite character from the film itself. So yeah, look, I'm I'm just gonna just gonna put that into into context. I do have a lot of plushies, but uh, but only those ones that I've shown today are from Disneyland and from what I got before Disneyland. Anyway, um, but uh, but no, now's the part where uh, where I cap off the uh, the video and uh, and and say thank you so much for watching and ciao guys and, and enjoy the photos.